Right, good evening. We've been asked to start the session, though there are two speakers who will be joining us shortly. Uh, but they will be joining us in another few minutes, so we will start. Uh, a little bit of an uh, introduction, I think, is, is required. Uh, you know, in, in, the, in the previous sessions, um, uh, mention was made uh, by the chairman, as also by the director general, the panel speakers, and it's interesting, you know, when um, speeches are made uh, and, and analysis is done, and this was done most recently as far as President Xi of China was concerned, that he delivered a speech and they actually calculated the number of times a certain word was used. And they said this is now the focus as far as China is concerned. And if you do an analysis of what has been said, I think the word online and digital has come up extremely often in the last couple of hours that we have been at this event. And I come from a background as far as online and e-commerce is concerned. I started a company called Metal Junction here in Kolkata about 21 years ago, and uh, which is an e-commerce company. And uh, I was the chairman of the National Committee of CII for e-commerce for three years. And now I am associated with NDH Go, which is this wonderful story uh, which is unfolding at this part of time and Kumar who is the founder spoke about it a little while ago. So my focus is going to be on e-commerce and online so I'm sorry about that lady and gentlemen but uh, that seems to be something that everybody is talking about and of course more from an omni-channel sort of perspective rather than um, an only channel perspective. So we are used to um, Amazon and Flipkart, who came up in, in the mid-2000s, 2007, 2008, and have really made a name for themselves as far as an online presence is concerned as an aggregator. But now we have also find that, you know, companies like Lenskart, who have done very well in this space, are, are actually augmenting and adding, sorry, and adding their offline presence to the online presence. We heard about Shadi.com that was some years ago opening up offline stores as far as this was concerned. So, but there are a number of you who have only an offline presence. There are some of you who also have a transactional website where, which takes online orders. And there are some of you who have a website all the, but you take orders over the telephone. So there are a number of different ways that each one of you is handling this online opportunity which is there and providing an opportunity to the buyer to actually come and engage with you the way that they are comfortable in engaging with you. So I would like to hear from each one of you in terms of which, which camp you are in and how are you using technology because one is the basic transactional technology. The second one is of course building upon that and some of you have been able to build upon that which is to use in terms of AI and ML and, and scan as you go, as you know, mention was made earlier, or social media marketing, et cetera, et cetera, which is once you have the foundation of an online transaction platform is what you build upon that to get further orders and to give a further experience. Uh, so there are each one of you on a different sort of journey. So maybe we can start off with the lady there, I think Aram Bagh, right? Where are you in this journey and what is your plans moving forward and how are you rethinking your strategy in the days to come? Yeah, uh, good evening everybody. So I think uh, Arambhag's Food Mart is one of the very few or I would say the only one here who is not doing e-commerce yet talking about the future of retail. Um, we do not do e-commerce, we do not, do, uh, do not have any online transaction platform. Uh, moving forward, we are thinking of doing that, but for me, future of retail, I would say in the earlier panel, some people talked about moving back to the basics. I would say we move forward with the basics. For bas basics for us are the things that we do best for our target segment of customers. We understand that we cannot do everything for everybody. Cost-wise, that is not sustainable. So. What we do for our target segment, we try to do it in the best possible way to 100%, giving out to 100%. And those are the basics for us. Our strength lies in our footprint, our locations. We have 67 stores only in Bengal. So we are 
placed everywhere, located everywhere. It's a customer. We offer the convenience of grocery shopping, not the luxury, not the beautiful experience, but just the convenience of grocery shopping. So the basics for us is the easy reach, the quick checkout. Within 10 minutes, you can do your groceries. And for offering that quality, that convenience, that service, we uh, focus our services, quality, and everything in those lines in the convenience. And yes, I understand that omni-channel or uh, online transaction is a natural extension to that kind of convenience. We are thinking about that, but right now, we are not doing it. But yet, we have a very loyal base of customers for whom we go out of our way to deliver that convenience and quality and the service for them. So you are thinking about it, but you have not yet not done yet. anything about it. Yeah. So as far as the future is concerned, and you know, this is in terms of rethinking strategies, are you going to be actively looking at this opportunity which technology provides you to reach out to your customers? Is this part of your strategy moving That forward? is a part of our strategy. But for the uh, from the point of view of the existing loyal customer base that we have, there is uh, also an added demand from them to be uh, for that e-commerce to be started. From that part, we are doing it. Uh, we are thinking about that. But right now, we have not yet uh, found a way until now, not a found way of uh, synchronizing the store inventory with the online and. Uh, we did not find it very cost effective and that's why I didn't do it. Aditya, moving to you. So what I've seen from your website, which is a very nice website. Thank so, you. So congratulations on that. But again, you are, as far as online orders are concerned, you're taking orders from Swiggy, Somato, and then you've given a phone number. So again, you are, what is the number of orders that you get from Swiggy, Somato as the aggregator as compared to the phone calls that you're getting? as compared to the dine-ins, if you can give us some idea. And what is your future plans in terms of how you're going to address this? Uh, so uh, before the pandemic hit us, so we were at about roughly 12, 13% of our sales came from Swiggy, Zomato and uh, Pickup. So we referred to uh, the offline mode of uh, when a customer is coming into the store and picking it up. So that was uh, roughly about 12, 13% of our sales. Our dine-in was uh, roughly about 88% of, uh, of our to of top line. So, but uh, with the pandemic setting in, all of us had to go back and study our customer journeys because customers were not coming. So we had to look at, uh, relook the entire strategy in terms of how we can reach to the customer faster. So uh, all of us did that and uh, uh, really now our online sales, our sales through all these partner apps have become roughly about 22-23%. Uh, keeping keeping the uh, offline sales offline sales have also grown so in terms when i talk about an absolute number uh, i think we 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 hit an incremental sale number of about roughly 13 14% just from online so uh, basically pandemic has really helped us because the offline numbers have come back in and uh, so th the incremental sale we are getting is uh, is really good for our bottom line to be very honest because uh, for us, uh, I don't know about the others, uh, commission percentage in, in terms of uh, what these delivery partners uh, charge is roughly very, very high. Is roughly from 20% to about 28% is the range where we are charged in terms of uh, the convenience fee which we are charged, which we can't charge back to the customer otherwise. So uh, the beta margin of uh, the online business is roughly 12 to 15% at, is where uh, where a retailer earns uh, out of it. But if we, when we look at as, at a concept of an incremental sale, uh, I think it's it makes a lot of sense. And uh, secondly, I, I feel that uh, online sales is here to stay. And uh, uh, because uh, all, all of us, I think post pandemic have uh, started thinking on how to make our business uh, pandemic free here, you know. So uh, in terms of that thought process, uh, I feel in future the store sizes will shrink, the delivery sales will increase, uh, the the dine-in sales will is here to stay. But but then we also have to look at uh, how we can increase sales by reaching out to the customers. So uh, you know you know they talk about the unknown unknown at this point of time, and you know which the pandemic really was you know something which nobody had planned for for it to stay for so long. How does one 
cater or how does one strategize to say that if there's going to be another black swan event such like this, how am I going to handle it? And really, have you thought about it, which that in case something like this were to come up, if there wasn't a Swiggy Zomato, do you need to have your own online presence where the you don't have to pay something like 20% as you mentioned, but obviously something which is manageable and cheaper than what you're doing today? So we, uh, uh, last my delivery happens to be the biggest challenge really. So it's not about ordering, it's about how we deliver. And uh, for us, we've not, not been able to successfully develop that. Uh, through NRAI, we were trying to build uh, a competitor uh, through, uh, we were trying to use dot pay and also do the last mile through Dunzo, but that effectively didn't happen because uh, uh, we don't still have, uh, for, a, for a person who wants to order in, will first open a Swiggy for us. And a person who wants to visit at our outlet will open a Zomato. So that's the normal uh, a customer uh, in terms of impulse. So, it's not very easy to uh, negate the uh, Swiggy Zomato uh, impact. So, it's a, it's a bad evil, but you have to stay with that evil. Okay, changing track a bit and coming into the pharmacy kind of a business, you are running tablet. And I think as far as tablet is concerned, you are doing a lot of online sales. So, maybe you want to talk a little bit about that and in your particular industry, which is very different to the others. So, uh, if 20% uh, counts as a good revenue share, then maybe yes. So, 20% of our sales is through app and website. Uh, the other 80% is equally split between, as you mentioned in the opening remarks, on call, 40%. And uh, through the physical touch points, asset light touch points that we have created, close to 500 across East India, 40% of our business comes when the customer walks in or calls those people. Uh, so, our, our take on the entire game has been, and by the way, from the, from the pandemic perspective, uh, it, it was a sad event, but uh, that worked for us because 60% of our users are in the age group of 40 to 70 and 10% of our users are above the age of 70 and they don't have their caregivers, their family members. Uh, mostly because they shift to larger towns for jobs. How do we make it the transaction convenient for them? Uh, so we did not fall into the trap of digital first or digital only game. Although we realize that that is the theme moving forward. So just for example, pre-pandemic, our online sales was 2% of our revenue. Currently, that's close to 20%. So we see a marked shift in that and it's going to go to up to 40% in the next five years. But having said that, most of our users are very comfortable. Uh, the, the experience is very seamless and personalized on call as, as well as in the community center outlets. And from there, we see a lot of transition ha happening on the app. So uh, we believe uh, in your opening remarks that some of us might be doing a mix of all that. So that has played out really well for us and allowed us to capture a market share which otherwise was only with the unorganized players in T2 to T5. So beyond tier, tier 3, tier 4 and tier 5, that comprises 51% of our revenue. Tier 1 and metros only comprises 7%. So for that particular audience, uh, we believe our model clicked well for us. You know, mention was made earlier that people like, I mean, aggregators like Flipkart and Amazon really did not have any background as far as retailing was concerned, as far as this business was concerned, they had a background in technology. What they brought to bear was technology and the online presence and built it from there. Now, you are people who have got that background as far as retailing and selling is concerned. You don't have that technology. But if technology is provided to you, if you don't invest more than 1% of your time in technology and you still get a technology platform, you don't need to learn about it. It's, it's something which is available to you. Would you not feel that the advantage that the Amazons and the Flipkarts have because of technology would, would disappear and you would come into your own? The customer buys the experience and the service, not the technology. Having said that, the entire experience and service that we are able to provide is because of technology. So from inventory management, uh, learning from the data that we have, 
you mentioned AI and ML, uh, learning from that data in real time, implementing that in inventory so that the service levels are high. Uh, the last mile delivery happens next day. That needs to be super fast. So the entire experience from collection of order, uh, verification, authenticity, to the last mile delivery, the returns, the goods, everything is uh, has a backbone of technology. So I think from a customer perspective, what he needs is his service and experience. And I think most of, most of the businesses here in some form or the other are layering it with technology, not necessarily only customer facing. So I think uh, at least from tablets perspective, we are there in technology. Uh, so one last question to you before we move um, to another industry. Uh, there is one MG in FarmEasy which is in this space. Do you sell through them as well or are you only selling yourself? No. So uh, they are our, what I would call peers who serve the metro markets. They have an amazing and beautiful supply chain to meet the customer aspirations in metro markets. But when it comes to delivering cold storage products, they don't do in a town like Kulti, which is 220 kilometers from here. When it comes to delivering next day, they don't because they do not, have, do not have a captive and controlled model of delivery which Tablet has. So in a counterintuitive way, Tablet has built an integrated supply chain with a backbone of technology, obviously, with an experience which is much more relatable to the customer. And, uh, and that is where the 1MGs or the Pharmacy or the NetMeds, uh, considering that their focus mostly is to be a 360 degree healthcare player for the larger markets. So I think the focus is different. We have focused more on pharmacy only for the smaller markets and they are a 360 degree player for the larger markets. So it's very different value chains that we have built. Right, thank you. Thank you very much. So uh, shifting, we are going now to Gagan and uh, who is into body line. So he's into the exercise equipment. I think we are all customers of yours or should be customers of yours. But maybe you can talk a little bit about your industry and what is your, uh, how do you think that is changing and what is your strategy for that change? So good evening, everybody. <clears throat> so two and a half years, it's been constant learning process for us. So we are primarily retailers of sports and fitness equipment, fitness being 90%, sports being 10%. And um, our e-commerce presence, if uh, I look at, 2018 and 19 was zero. And from there, at the start of the pandemic and other circumstances forced us to be in the game. And uh, the world was talking about digitalization and e-commerce. So we also said, why should we sit back and why, why not explore the possibility? Having said that, we, we built our own e-commerce uh, platform. We got registered on Flipkart's and Amazon's of the world. But uh, our experience was not so good as far as the numbers were concerned. Because our product primarily needs A, experience, demonstration, first-hand experience, I would say, and a lot of service, installation. So our threat a competitor threat from that perspective is very, very minimalistic. But as the world is evolving, the whole entire thing, ecosystem is changing. So we thought we should not be left behind. And with that idea, we built our own e-commerce platform and we were present everywhere. And as on date, we are still working hard to make our presence felt and more stronger. We want to be omnipresent, not because we want to sell more through that channel, but yes, that definitely helps us on the offline stores as well. Being present on the e-commerce, being present on the networks definitely helps your brand to grow and also gives a feeling of trust, confidence in the customers. So let's say initially I was we were dealing only in Calcutta and West Bengal. Now we are dealing Pan India. We are giving free delivery service installation Pan India. So we have developed that channel. We've de the whole idea is that to move ahead with time to evolve. Our sales in terms of numbers are very, very different from other products. Our product is a little different. We are still 
2 to 3% of the numbers the sales the volumes come from e-commerce sites and 98 97% is offline as on date but that definitely will change to what extent we are not sure about that but how are you preparing yourself for that change i mean what is it that you're doing to so that if the change happens that more and more people are happier buying online than offline then how are you preparing yourself for that uh, op uh, for that eventuality if i may or that you know, and converting that into an opportunity as compared to your competitors so we have done all the groundwork we have prepared our e-commerce channel we have uh, completely set up the delivery system the installation process channel partners in different parts of the country who would provide service for us on our behalf and at the same time uh, multi product presence with competitive pricing so all that is in place other than that what is left is your presence to be seen on the different platforms definitely the seo and scms will help you in that and we have started investing in this that's not very old about 8 9 months back we started that process and uh, we find it very very progressive right now we are finding it interesting although not of encourage lot of uh, encouragement doesn't come from the sales perspective but still we are fully prepared we are completely ready and at times there are instances there are times when the customer is calling from nagpur for our product speaking to us on the phone asking for various data and details and specifications on a whatsapp and then going on a portal and buying online so it's kind of an omnipresent thing so if you say that we are physical and digital digital is what we are talking about i think we have and we are the only ones touchwood in this category of business who have compiled and readied ourselves for this kind of a situation so one last question from you before uh, i switch to deepak is that you know you talked about your customer approaching you or interacting with you on three different modes or three different medium the telephone that whatsapp and the uh, and the website right now are these three in your case integrated are there any plans of integrating them so that there is a seamless journey that the customer has irrespective of which medium he chooses to come from today as compared to tomorrow see one important thing will still remain the first hand touch and feel experience of our product will only convince a buyer to buy if let's say i was selling an iphone 14 or a 13 would have been a different category altogether different experience for us a product of 50 60000 average price i don't see people buying it online so easily they want to have the first hand touch and feel experience of that and it needs a lot of convincing demonstration and a lot of um, explanation from our side then only a person is prepared to buy that product so our product it's really difficult right so we are getting a different flavor as far as the different industries are concerned and and i think that's very very amazing and i think this panel has been chosen very well by rai to give the different sort of um nuances as far as each one is concerned coming to you uh, deepak so deepak you deepak. sorry karan um uh, I, i beg your pardon so you know come do you have a mic yes you have a mic okay. can you share your perspective as as far as this is concerned and how in your industry this is evolving So um, I'm Karan. Uh, we run a retail chain by the name of City Style. Uh, we're a brick and mortar chain only. We don't have any uh, consistent online presence as of now. Uh, during the pandemic, we did dabble with uh, being a little bit on the marketplaces because there were times where we were really struggling. Right? We didn't have a lot of people coming to our stores. Everyone was scared. Uh, we wanted to ensure that we can still reach out to our customers. So we tried to dabble with a few marketplaces here and there. Um, so what we realized is that at the end of the day, we're a value retailer. Uh, so marketplaces don't work for us if we want to ensure that we're doing justice to the customer because for us justice is providing customer the best product at the best price now when a marketplace takes up 40% you can't provide the end customer with the best product at the best price 
So that's something which we ended up struggling with. And then we realized that if we were to do that, then we have to have a dual pricing model, which again went against what we wanted to do. So we would have to then sell a t-shirt, let's say at 100 rupees in our store, but 150 on any of these marketplaces. So what we worked on now is that uh, for us, whether it's physical or online, at the end of the day, these are all sales channels. And that's something all of us as brands have to, at the end of the day, come to terms with. Uh, we might say that, yes, we're a brick and mortar retailer, and that's great. But that also means there is an opportunity cost, because there are some customers who would potentially want to buy from us online. So now we're working on some kind of a model where it might just be like a hyper-local kind of a model. It could just be an omni kind of a model where we use just our stores as delivery, as delivery channels. So where our inventory, let's say if I'm in a Devgarh, then my Devgarh store inventory is open to the public of just Devgarh. So earlier the objective was to look at Pan-India or a regional play. Now we're also thinking of a, a local play, at least for my customers in that zone. Can I have my inventory available to them on an application or a website or something along those lines? That being said, we also have a vision of doing an Omni play as well, where through our website or in some manner, we can also have our inventory available to anyone in the country or potentially anywhere in the world as well. Uh, so in terms of the future, I think we've been talking about this at every RAI event or every RIF or every IFF event for the last four or five years now. It's the same conversations on what's going to happen in the future. Uh, I think more evolved markets like the West, physical retail still exists. Online retail penetration is still under 10% or around that. Uh, I'm not sure of the figure in India today. It has grown. Uh, and I think it is going to con continue to grow. But in our sector, we are not just a shop. We're actually in an entertainment zone. That's how I look at it. Because I'm in tier two, tier three, tier four of India, where uh, even though we're just a standalone retailer, we're thought of as malls. So when I go to these places, people actually say, oh, you're the mall owner. So I mean, for us, we're not a mall. We're just a show. But for our customers there, we're actually the mall. Because that's an entertainment. That's all they have. They don't have the quests and the Spencers, I mean, the south cities of the world. So I think. We're both here to stay. I think it's the opportunity for an online retailer. How can they be available physically as well? And for us as physical retailers, how can we ensure that we're also capturing the market uh, online? So that's where I think we stand. So su switching tracks a bit and moving away from technology and online and coming to something a uh, little softer, philanthropy. Is that something which you are interested in? And if you are, is there any business case that you can make out of it? Is there, any, is there some way that you can take advantage of that as far as your business? And when I say take advantage, I don't mean it in the negative fashion, but more in the positive way that you can give an experience to your customers because of your involvement with philanthropic activities. Um, so I'm going to answer this question as me, Karan, and not necessarily me representing my company. So um, I am very much involved with philanthropy. It's something very close to my heart. I spend, I would say, half a day to a day in a week uh, on philanthropy. Uh, I run an NGO myself. I'm part of a few different boards. Um, we are, I'm part of an organization called Kolkata Gives, where uh, we connect donors to credible projects. We're also building a school for a thousand underprivileged girls uh, in and around Calcutta. So I think philanthropy is extremely important. Uh, all of us in our own ways should find a way to give back to the society, give back to the underprivileged and create opportunities for them. Um, now, if I talk about it from the branding perspective, I think there are a lot of avenues where um, whether we are any kind of a brand owner now has channels to support organizations uh, to increase their presence. So for instance, uh, when the entire pandemic was going on, uh, we provided, we fed about 10,000 families in Bengal. Right? At the same time, there were other uh, retailers, including Bazaar Kolkata here, for instance, where they focused on doing the same initiative, but they did it around uh, where they were. Right. So they did it. I'm not sure if it was a, I don't think it was a branding exercise. It was about how do they mobilize? They've got 20, 30, 40 people there. Let's mobilize people there. So we did similar stuff in and around our stores as well, right? Where uh, when stores were shut, people were struggling. We sent medicines there. We sent things there and ensured that people were getting it. Now, net result, did some people feel good that a Bazaar Kolkata or a City Style or any of these other retailers are doing good? Sure. At the same time, I think uh, there are numerous brands uh, which now support uh, initiatives 
which at the end of the day showcase their presence to their consumer right so uh, there are organizations which are providing pharmaceutical help or pharmacies or healthcare centers in rural india now there are let's say cement brands or steel brands who at the end of the day their ma main customer is rural india um, they are giving them support and getting their logo on their let's say their t-shirt right so when the guy is actually helping uh, a family in rural india they are going to see some cement or some steel so i think it's an interesting space uh, for me it's more emotional because i'm more hands on in the space but i'm just glad that for whatever reason people are putting in money in the space and people are willing to uh, invest donate contribute and if on the flip side they get some other benefit from it so be it and we're actually through some of our ngos creating models like that so there is an ngo called rural healthcare uh, where we have centers all across rural bengal so now we are creating a rural marketing model uh, and going to corporates and saying we're not looking for your donation but we're going to be sending out our people door to door telling them to come to a rural healthcare center now if you want i'll put your logo on my t-shirt right so now we are actually coming up with ways such that it's a marketing play with a philanthropic uh, sense in the midst you know i was uh, with the tata group for close to 40 years and um, we had uh, well i make mention of a particular incident which took place here down the road in in tata center we had ratan tata who had come down this was many years ago and we had the ceos of various companies um, who were um, engaging with him and there was one gentleman who shall i shall not name or his company it was a new company which had been formed and they were in in a space where he said that i have to pay um people to get certain works done and um, ratan tata said you know then you need to get out of that space and there was this guy trying to get some some kind of um, um, acknowledgement or approval or you know something of that that you know you are in a very different difficult space and you are being able to manage ratan tata was very clear he said that look i don't mind leaving this country if i have to but i will not compromise on my values as far as not giving no there was nothing this person could do so he went back to giving diaries and calendars on new years and so much so that in a couple of years their that company's customers said that look he is coming from that company all you will get is, is diaries and calendars so don't even ask him for anything else so this was part of that brand building which happened over, it took many years it, it didn't happen immediately but it took many years that you know what does this mean what does this young company stand for and what are the values that they have and it sort of inculcated into that or got in, in, in meshed into that brand and i think uh, the uh, the gentleman from maniawar talked about this a little earlier today where he talks in terms of the fact that we don't give any discounts and i've heard this from other people in maniawar as well who say you know we don't give any discounts here so if you were to buy from maniawar you will know that you're getting it at a price right. and that's what the brand stands for here right. so you know this is wonderful which is in terms of the future strategies which may take a little longer for you to build but will be sustainable and which will be long lasting and and i'm sure you're all building institutions which will stand for a long long time so thank you very much for that thank you next to you if you may introduce yourself and talk a little bit about your industry and your company and how you're rethinking your strategies uh, so my name is tejas shah i represent uh, bazar kolkata i am a cfo with them uh, i am with bazar kolkata since last 3 and 1/2 years now prior to this i have been with consulting firms spent roughly about a decade with uh, close to three of the big fours so i've been on both sides of the table and i uh, we run a similar business uh, like karan mentioned about city style and i completely align to uh, the thought which he shared we uh, have a very thin uh, margin of errors so unless you want to burn cash uh, i think uh, one would not go into it uh, i would not say that we don't discuss about online uh, even as late as last board meeting i think investors raised this point and we discussed uh, so focus is uh, very clear yes we want to be in that space but that will never be our core Uh, we don't see online in uh, mid medium terms uh, when i say medium terms in next two years we don't see going there uh, rather uh, when we when the pandemic happened uh, we shifted our focus so there is other side of our uh, value chain which is our unorganized uh, manufacturers or all our vendors so idea was how do we bring them or how do we how do we enable them so that we have better clarity of their operations 
they have better clarity in terms of what we are thinking, what sort of an order we are placing on them, uh, what's happening to their uh, quality approvals, what's happening to their ASNs, what's happening to their payments. So uh, uh, we evaluated various uh, products which are available in the market. Available in the market. Uh, but when we actually talk about uh, this technology space, though products are available, but they are not suited to uh, business needs. I, we have a different way of capturing data. We have different strategies which we adopt. One brand, say if I go to uh, uh, say uh, uh, Wrong, or for that matter, say Louis Philippe, I think they would have a different strategies altogether. Their buying pattern would be completely different. Uh, we don't uh, have any uh, focused brand. We don't per se uh, uh, promote our brand, though we have in-house brands, but not that we, we promote uh, in that manner. So for us to focus on that space, when we evaluated these products, you more often than not, you pay for the product and you end up improvising and improving their products with having very, very minimal control over what they would end up delivering it to you. So during the pandemic phase, uh, we chalked out entire strategy in terms of what we wanted. Uh, we engaged with uh, a technology firm and we have got the product internally developed for our vendors. Uh, and as we speak, I think we have rolled out this to uh, five of our uh, core marquee vendors who have a major contribution towards it. And uh, to be very honest, uh, these features, what we have built now is not available, available in the market. Right from the time uh, when, uh, when he is getting a fabric, he shares a plan and he also shares whether he's actually delivering on as per that plan or not. So we have clear visibility. Uh, guys sitting in my office can simply uh, get a report and at least follow up with that vendor wherein earlier there was no visibility whatsoever. So, uh, and at, to add to that, going digital, uh, going e-commerce online is not difficult these days, but when you uh, integrate it with your supply chain backend, sustaining it, ensuring uh, the availability of product online uh, to give that same uh, experience to the customer, I think this is something which, which is very important. And we have aggressively worked towards uh, strengthening our supply chain also. So I think that's where the entire effort uh, went into uh, during the entire pandemic phase. And now we have reached a stage wherein we are just fine tuning whatever we thought of. Tell me, I understand you have over 100 stores. Is that correct? Uh, 121. 121, but they're all in the Eastern region. Uh, seven states. So seven states of uh, so Eastern we, we, India. We have, we have reached to far, far north of uh, UP as well. Okay, far. But what is keeping you from the west and the south, if I may ask? I mean, is there any strategy? Is there any plan as far as those markets are concerned? Uh, uh, see, uh, of late, we have expanded to uh, uh, Andhra and Chhattisgarh as well. Uh, but when we, when we talk about west uh, side, I think it's still, it's not that we never had stores there. Uh, we had stores in Gujarat as well. We had stores in Surat side. Ahmedabad, uh, that, that's way back uh, somewhere around 2007, 2008. Uh, but over years, I think we have evolved a lot. Uh, evolved a lot. Last uh, four or five years, significant uh, efforts have been put in in terms of bringing product hygiene, in terms of uh, having uh, right people on board, in terms of having right infrastructure in place. Uh, it's not that we are not ready yet. I think it's a conscious call. We are going step by step instead of going big bang and, and at least fall like a bag of cards. Good. So they call it, I think they call it adjunct uh, diversification rather than open. So you come from a background of EY and Deloitte and PwC. So you find that as an advantage or as a disadvantage uh, in, in what you're doing now? So I would call it a balance of both. Uh, when you are on the other side of the table, it's very easy for you to uh, recommend. Uh, and when it actually comes on implementing, implementing on grounds, uh, I think with that balanced approach, it gives you a lot of uh, room in terms of you're not going wrong anywhere and you're covering all your tracks. Good. Thank you. Very, very diplomatic answer, but a good answer. Thank you very Thank you. much. Coming to you, Deepak. Deepak, yes. so you are, um, well, you are into various things and I think the, the, the most recent one is Pledge Vocal, Vocal for, local. for Local. Maybe you can talk a little bit about how that integrates with what uh, 1X solution does and, you know, and what is your plans moving forward in the next six to eight months. So I'll take it from Tejas. Uh, like I come from my ANY, uh, worked for two years. I have a CSES, but uh, my passion was marketing. So in 2011, I found a way of communication is a SMS and I entered into that industry. Uh, 
at that time telling sms as a way of communication was very difficult mm. and when i started in 2013 full fledged i had only one dream ki any client who is spending on marketing should be my client and i am very thankful to six uh, people on the dais today that's why they were selected client. that's why you were selected <laughs> <laughs> nothing such uh, aditya anish uh, gagan ji uh, tejas uh, city style ajanta all are my client so it feels good factor and coming to the point of the pledge vocal for local or what we are talking of today is of a localization so whatever we say we are all uh, looking good uh, in this suits and everything but when we'll go home we will be happy to have our pajamas or whatever we wear is a comfortable thing similarly in indian economy if you look at what gagan ji was saying physical is a need if you are thinking ki i completely respect online e-commerce but india is not so developed today to go completely online we recently just launched a brand who is into gold jewelry into south it's a leading brand and they want to do a e-commerce campaign and i have tried and tried to convince him ki you have a budget because they have taken a famous celebrity as the endorsement but no one is going to buy a jewelry online if i ask the question in the forum today how many of you would be comfortable to buy a gold coin or jewelry without going uh, to the store and my client says ki i have a huge budget deepak uh this is a fabulous design of 2 lakh rupees earring why will people not buy online uh, and it's very difficult to convince him but when we look at one x solution we have built over india roughly around 60 crore data and uh, over 10000 pin code so we help brands to market themselves across india to the territory they are looking at like tier 2 tier 3 places and if you look at a uh, very strategy i think there are two point we should discuss on is one is the personalization which will be the next future because if you are going to a restaurant and if they address you in a flight ki dear deepak dear anish dear aditya it gives a great factor so that is the thing for which you need to collect data the retail industry have understood in last 3 4 years a uh, big giants like shopper stops and all have implemented dominos have done earlier and i think one of the other way we have to look on is the communication because if you look at the brand like fnb dominos they used to send a communication to their customer every week on every tuesday or friday and it cost around 7 rupees for one year for 52 impression so if you look at for 3 years it's hardly a 20 rupees cost so whatsapp is one of the great way of communication now i won't say sms but whatsapp is a great way of communication and a retailer should always try to inform their client on the whatsapp and always try to inform them of the offers and those way of communication uh, in pledge vocal for local we are just trying to help local business uh, not specific to indian but i believe uh, we should enjoy pizza in italy uh, we should enjoy pastries in uh, paris but we should not fancy for rasgulla in paris then that will be a disaster so there are all the great people sitting here who are building a great thing from ajanta to tablet they are reaching out to local people and offering their services you know this local story is very good also from the perspective of reducing carbon footprint that you are not demanding something which is not available locally and and for that reason it has to fly or transport many many hundreds of thousands of uh, miles or kilometers so there is this great whiplash effect which is happening as far as qatar is concerned i mean should it be a venue for a football tournament you know i mean the world cup for example so anyway that's another story and i'm sure we can take that up in another panel discussion but coming back to something that you mentioned which is personalization and mention was made earlier i think by kumar who mentioned in terms of you know if if i am of the age of 20 to 40 then why should i see diapers right i i should see diapers if either i'm very young or i'm a mother or i'm very old and i need adult so this is one example of of personalization which he gave another example could be in terms of when i go to a hotel i like a particular kind of pillow and i would be very happy if that if that hotel remembers and gives me the kind of pillow without me asking for it every time i go which is also personalization but how do you relate to personalization in retail 
and to your customers here who you mentioned are six in number and how have you helped them in that personalization uh, journey so to say so very rightly said uh, i'll touch on the carbon footprint also uh, so we all are into uh, making a life complex uh, i look it into pledge vocal for local where i am trying to help a business into marketing but i am also a believer of local jobs so if a guy from bihala is coming to sector 5 for the job that is not the way he could have got a job in the bihala only and this we have understood in covid time many of the people from calcutta who were working in bangalore delhi are coming back and working from home and if you look on the personalization side uh, we have helped a e-commerce client suppose if there is a girl who has purchased a small size dress of a red color is the favorite color so whatever future email she will be getting is of all the small size and of the red color and all the combination of that color of course she can have an option but that is the way of personalization we have done uh, in the e-commerce when we see of the retail it should be like what is the pattern of the people buying so there could be a people who are buying every week every month or there could be once a year so customer has to or the business have to take the data and the data point and then do a retargeting on that one so you the six of his customers sitting here i hope all of you are satisfied with the personalization he is doing for you but we will now switch to ajanta and ask uh, the lady here in terms of what is her strategy for ajanta moving forward what do you think that you will be doing in the coming months good evening everyone so coming back to the question see we are uh, into mass marketing obviously but uh, the retail that i handle has been into uh, the whole of eastern india we have spread out to so yeah we are uh, we are absolutely into e-commerce as well and we are providing a lot of uh, personalization services also like you said so there what we do is that we offer um, a lot of uh, you know uh, a lot of deals to the customers when they come in we offer their loyalty programs and things like that we are also into e-commerce and uh, unicommerce as well say a customer walks into my store and doesn't find a size or their particular color that is available to rest of the stores so what we do is that sometimes we deliver it to uh, the address that they provide to us so yeah that way i think we have, uh, we are pretty much there all over and uh, we are selling all across india through e-commerce channel and uh, we are doing great that way also we are making a presence there great so uh, this is what you have done already as any yes. plans for the future any any different plans for the future or is it the same that you plan to do in the future as well see in the future yes we plan to move across uh, the south of india we are uh, there um, in bihar in orissa in chatisgarh that way we are planning to make a movement down to the south and we have a presence in the north india as well uh, slightly with the wholesale markets we are approaching there also and um, e-commerce yeah e-commerce we getting orders from chennai sometimes gujarat sometimes delhi there are different sizes that we are catering to and yeah that way you know it was interesting we had a discussion at this very hall many years ago and uh, this was an fnb uh, panel uh, which was here at that point of time and we had various people here and it was interesting because there were some people and i won't take any names this lady has been in calcutta for the last 30 years serving bengali food and she does a tremendous job but she hasn't grown out of out of calcutta out of that one place and there was somebody else in the room or part of the panel who is in dubai who is in london who is all over the place he's he's not only pan india but he's he's global and how he has been able to take those those issues that she was talking about which is in terms of quality and you know stuff like that and give the same quality even in remote places like so what are your global plans do you have any global plans as retailers are you planning to go i mean we've heard of the pan india story from eastern india to the rest of india but does and this is to open to any one of you and i will come to you mr das but is there anyone who's got a, a global plan yes uh, okay we do. so we are not only into retail and wholesale we are uh, i mean yes e-commerce as well yes we are also into exporting 
so we export a lot of hawaii chappals and a lot of safety shoes all across um, we are into you know in the middle eastern parts in bangladesh and some parts of uh, south africa as well so we are doing a lot of exports we've started a lot of exports for the last i think what 4 5 years and yeah we doing great there we had a lot of people any plans of manufacturing overseas or is the manufacturing going to take manufacturing, place manufacturing we had planned somewhere in bangladesh but that plan is uh, still in the process right now so let's see how the pro- how the plan in bangladesh takes over because there's a lot of demand for our brand in bangladesh there's a lot of bangladeshis who come in and you know in our, in our stores and keep asking for our brands that when are we going to open there excellent i think a tablet uh, there's a lot of medical tourism also which is happening as far as people from bangladesh is concerned maybe you should see in terms of how the two of you can tie up or is there any other way of of working together as far as bangladesh is concerned yeah uh, i think thanks for the suggestion and uh, bangladesh happens to be an attractive market no doubt and in terms of uh, medical tourism uh, from tablets perspective we believe there is uh, going ahead in uh, not in the immediate two year plan but we have developed some strategy in the forward looking years for intra city medical tourism uh, the other keyword that could be used is medical concierge services uh yes there's an opportunity but the uh, but the trick or the threat is uh we seem to get oversold on the idea of cross selling uh but the product market fit is where the entire game lies and sometimes it it you know the the um, the backlash is pretty strong so we're taking one step at a time and uh will definitely look towards ajanta for inroads into various markets thank you you know i see a lot of people from bangladesh coming across the border for medical reasons and you we know, do sell a lot of medicines to them though ah uh, okay you do that so you But, know what what happens uh, these people come in uh, through bongao and various areas uh, bashirhat sorry bashirhat and various areas they come to see the doctors in calcutta and they have a lot of medicines to buy and stock up for the next few months and yeah that is where uh, especially all the towns that we cap- have we have market share in which are border towns have a lot of business which which happens to these customers as well uh, their their belief on the indian brands pharmaceutical brands is far stronger so that is where yes we indirectly see a lot of bangladesh business in the bordering towns especially i think people from bangladesh come for medical tourism as well as to eat um, food from kc das i think that is the other thing which attracts a lot of people so when they come they come in at least 7 to 8 people there may be only one patient who needs medical attention the others come for different other reasons maybe to buy hawaii chappals or to get kc das uh, sweets but over to you uh, mr das and to for you to sh- share with us in terms of what do you see doing differently in the future one is of course I mean I don't think you need to reach market parity you are the leader as far as your your industry is concerned but what do you see in terms of further differentiation that you're going to be bringing about Good evening everyone namaskar uh, first let me uh, uh, say about myself a little uh, it's I am obviously representing Kesidas but there is a uh, uh, newer addition to my what do you uh, call say my portfolio i am a representative of mishti udyog which is the sweets and savories association of bengal and the famous chana chur producers they have also uh, come under our association and uh, many other brands of the great mishti industry and this uh, chana chur they have also come Uh, i'm thankful to all of them anyways uh, if i come back to mo- our brand kc das i think we were the first to be uh, to start the exporting of indian sweet meats uh, uh, to which first started in europe that was i think way back uh, in for 60s early ni- 1960s because we canned the rasgullas in 1930 pre independence time uh but development of the can has always been uh you know it's progressing still now 
we have been value adding uh, uh, to our products like with uh, minerals, uh, added, uh, added minerals and uh, vitamins, dietary fibers and uh, if you uh, look about marketing, we have our presence uh, in South India and Bangalore which was way back in 1972. Because I think many of you would be knowing that all our sweet shops were closed down in uh, by a government order, mill control order in 1965. We were all closed down for two years. So actually we were forced, that was a boon in disguise I think for us, uh, which is why we thought of going out of Bengal and we started in uh, Bangalore. And we have uh, stores in uh, Chennai too. As far as uh, going out of India it's, is concerned as we were discussing, very recently the gov uh, government of uh, the British government actually, they are quite interested and the present uh, Deputy British High Commissioner, he had visited my home recently. We have discussed uh, at length about how we can progress about it uh, and the British High Commissioner also he flew down from uh, Delhi and he visited uh, our store in Esperant personally with his family to taste the Rasagolla and the Rasamalai also. Basically our main uh, disadvantage for all our Indian sweets is the perishability and uh, packaging is a huge challenge. We are working on it because MAP, the modified atmospheric packaging, which is which has de uh, which is being developed very recently, we are trying on it to develop it so that we can at least increase the shelf life up to say uh, one and a half to two months, so that our presence is felt more uh, in the retail departmental stores. Because presently we can sell only for, from our uh, own retail outlets. But as uh, I think uh, you are saying that uh, personali personalization is very important like the jewelry stores. About Mishti also people want to do sample testing, right? whether it's Mishti or it's uh, Chanachur. Sample testing is very necessary if you want to order in huge quantities for say weddings or, uh, or any other gatherings. So sample testing is very essential. So this online market had grown up quite well during the pandemic, but post pandemic we are seeing there is a reduction in uh, sales through uh, e-commerce. Uh, this is it. You know, uh, last month I was in the United States and uh, I asked people what I should bring for them. And of course, most of them said Chana Chur or Kesi Das Rasgullas. But the interesting part was that their, in, the knowledge, the, well, what came out from there was in terms of the fact that um, uh, more and more Michelin star uh, chefs from India are setting up shop in, in New York which is the food capital of the world, you know, uh, most definitely. And more and more recognition of people from India in who are serving Indian food is happening as far as New York is concerned. Are you taking advantage? You, do you see that happening as well? And do you, are you plan to take advantage of that fact that Indian food is now becoming mainstream, you know, very much like Chinese or Mexican in New York? Yeah, actually this is happening and mainly uh, uh, we see the Bangladesh is having uh, being uh, they are setting up stores, but the quality of the sweets or the recipe uh, does not match our Bengal's uh, uh, food products. That is what uh, is happening. But we are constantly getting uh, offers. But uh, our main problem is we have to set up the entire uh, factory, uh, entire factory there because we don't work on simple, uh, you know gas. We work on uh, steam. So we have to set up boilers there and uh, for that there are certain stringent norms 
in uh, UK as well as in USA. Uh, but we are actually working on it. Let's see what happens. Good. So it's good to hear that uh, there are companies from uh, based out of Calcutta, based out of East Eastern region, going global. I will now open it up for questions from the audience before I ask my final question. So anybody from the audience, please do raise your hand if you have a question to anyone in the panel. If there are no questions, then I will ask my question because we have limited time. So my question is, you know, mention was made earlier about ONDC, right? How are you planning to take, do you see and mention was made in terms also the fact that they're running a pilot in Bangalore at this point of time, I think across 20 um, uh, zip codes in, uh, in Bangalore. They've held it in five different cities across India and now they are also planning to come to Calcutta. Do you see an opportunity as far as ONDC is concerned, as far as your business is concerned? Anyone uh, would like to? So the point when I was saying that instead of just going Omni, we are looking at, let's say, if we're in a specific in a specific town, how can I ensure that just my inventory of that store gets opened up to the uh, ecosystem of that ex uh, of that town? So I think the entire ONDC introduction is definitely going to help us uh, learn more about how we can make that happen. So now it's no longer just going to be about us trying to set that up. I think this whole ONDC platform might actually expedite our efforts and give us a platform to be able to do this. So I'm really looking forward to understanding more about how they can help us enable the same. Okay, so one one slight uh, uh, difference. They are not a platform, they are a network. Sure, so, so, I mean. Okay, so you, you as a platform have to come on if you're going to be a seller correct. integrated into that correct. network of theirs. That's so anybody else, fine. So th that's okay, if, I mean, that's only a terminology difference, but just to get the right, right it's, it's a network which is being set up by ONDC. And you as a seller, as a buyer, or as a service provider can participate in that. So I think I'll only add with uh, you and uh, Pintuda, uh, with NDH Go, uh, working closely with ONDC, I think a uh, lot of us have an opportunity to learn how we can integrate in a way which uh, um, adds significant value to business. That's what we are here for. But uh, the only thing is once the pilot, uh, there is much more clarity on how things are going to operate and what's the efficiency and effectiveness is really out there because a lot of projects do come through but do not complete the entire cycle of success. So I'm sure with you uh, up there working closely with them, uh, it would be beneficial for a lot of us in the East. Right. Anybody else? Because it's in interesting. Yes. It's interesting because just yesterday ITC has tied up with NDH Go for that uh, project in Bangalore where ITC is reaching out to their retailers to share with them the, that uh, they can come on board as a supplier on, on uh, ONDC through NDH Go. So the advantage there is that, you know, as compared to closed platform, so I'm just taking Amazon as a closed platform, where the buyer and the seller and everybody has to be on Amazon, right? So while as far as ONDC is concerned, the buyer can be from any platform, the seller can be from any platform, but they are now available on that network. So it gives a great opportunity to all of us to be on that platform as either a seller or as a buyer. I, I go there as a buyer, as a consumer, and I will suddenly be able to see sellers who will come to me or be made available to me from various, various sort of platforms. Over to you. And I think this is the last one the lady has stood up. <laughs> I'm happy that uh, this will help the economy and boost up the sales and gives a lot of power to the local uh, manufacturers as well. And what I think is it will save a lot of uh, carbon footprint which we are talking of because the local distribution channel can be held on this way. Yeah, so the final story is in terms of uh, the internet is concerned and these platforms are concerned and the Indian government has learned from what has happened in America is that they have been taken over so to say by the private sector is that the Indian government wants to play a role and wants to make this a little bit more democratic. And so give the smaller guy a chance, the smaller consumer, the smaller retailer, the smaller everybody a chance to actually uh, compete with the big boys. And I think it's a great opportunity that we need to take advantage of, like very much like the UPI was launched by the government of India. I think ONDC is another great example of that. So thank you very much. You've been a great panel and I've quite enjoyed uh, moderating you. So thank you very much for coming.